Da da da. Or a cup. Give me a cup, then I know that <laughs> you can hear me well. All right. I'm looking at the chat. I have to look at the chat on my phone. Yeah. Perfect. And can you hear this? I guess you do, since it's come from the since it comes from the same mixer. Uh, lovely to be here. And yeah, thanks everybody for being here with me in probably the nicest green room I've ever been because it's my studio. <laughs> so I'm going to keep an eye on the chat also, but I'm also going to performing on a bunch of instruments that I don't really often play that much in my videos. So this is going to be like a little tour around the lesser known corners and I got a few things prepared. But yeah, I just want to make some music, then maybe talk about it a bit, then make another go move, move over. There will be a bit of camera movement around. And then I'm just going to play another track and another track. And I hope the time will pass very fast and fun. So for the first piece, I yeah, this is uh, kind of a tribute to Vova Schwemann, a modular builder who, yeah, unfortunately passed away. Um, uh, this week, it was already or last week. So I am playing on my modular over there. So this one that's blinking over there. And I'm playing one of the modules that he developed and which is still one of my most favorite modules in UREC of all time, which is the RES4 RES4, which is for bandpass filters. And yeah, I'm going to do a little track in that corner. So follow me over there. Piano. Woo! Okay, I think we got all the sound we need. Thank you. 
to the other microphone, because this one's a bit spacey. And here I'm back. So that was Modular Res4 Chaos by or Chaos uh, by Clank Modular. Did all the rhythms and yeah, those were basically the modules that I used the Geranolog mixer all together with the Sapamonicon and the piano. And yeah, it's sad to see someone who whose instruments I've been playing for so long, basically since I started playing Modular ten years ago pass away so yeah rest in peace Boba Schwemann and uh, yeah <laughs> so I'm just gonna look in the chat if you have any questions to this we can have after each piece like a few minutes where we talk about it and I'll happy to chat and answer any question that you have so I'll give this uh, a minute Kalp or I can just say kalp whenever someone oh no that's that would that would ruin the chat. <laughs> For some reason I think of a fish, but I think that's a carp, not a kelp, always. Ah yeah. My favorite sweater. Right now it's this one actually. I really like this one. Bold colors. But yeah. What gives you the most joy in life? Something like this, playing music in front of people. <laughs> That's one of the biggest joys. Or doing little creative projects with my kids. Like we painted some wooden statues with acryl today and that was similarly uh, fulfilling. Uh, what was doing the Kordish sequencing? Yeah, that actually was, uh, that's the Sapamonicon that can do this automatically. That panning effect, there was no real panning, but the width came from the dual quadro verb technique, many um, putting one quadro verb after the other, so that adds that nice space. And also this <laughs> amount of noise. I wonder if it translates. So, how have you been enjoying the Panamonium? Ah, Brumata, of course, Panamonium was also in there. That's what the Panam, that's what the, what's it called? Uh, the Sapamonicon ran through. I ran the Sapamonicon through the Panharmonium. Well, instrument names have gotten quite crazy. Yeah. Early opinions on the Strega. Oh, I got a 35 minute video, one of the longest I've ever done, which I just exported before this whole thing. So on Monday, uh, I will release that video and there's everything in there. I answered a lot of questions that I got from Instagram and on YouTube. So that's why it went so long. And I'm even running it through five phasers. Okay. Will we have some Heinbach dancing tonight? Maybe because I've also gotten some dancey tracks. So but first, maybe I move now over to this corner and I'll do some ambient on the Zuiko ST50 and the Folktech Omnichord, which yeah, are two of my favorite instruments and I'm using the hologram to add some space. So just a little ambient piece before we go into something that's driven by the TR70, uh, TR707 that's sitting up top. I gotta move the camera. camera oh there you go perfect all right all nice and in focus see you over there
<laughs> that was those two. Pro tip, if you intend to play with a lot of pressure, check if your keyboard stands are actually fixed correctly. <laughs> so I got this then you assembled it and it I need to play this with pressure and I <laughs> but that actually resulted in a nice drone in the end which yeah told me where it should go and sometimes I tend to be afraid of the louder noises so I wouldn't have played that uh, if it hadn't happened by accident so here's to accidents I'm gonna look again at the chat and yeah ask anything that you want about maybe this particular spot please <sighs> Merlin, ha, ah, yeah, this, um, there's two effects at play that help boost this up. One is, of course, the hologram electronics um, microcosm, which is pretty, pretty epic in its own right, but it really just likes to get like one note and then do its thing. And the other thing is the specular tempest pedal, which is, yeah, I've used it all over and on the record that comes next in April. It's the only reverb basically that I use. Pretty great pedal and that helps it in getting something that's not like a shimmer but more like a choir to everything. Okay. Um, the Omnicord is circuit bent. Yes, uh, Demis, that's bent by Folktech. I bought it directly from them ages ago and I've used it in so many, so many soundtracks that I did. It's just a very uncanny instrument because you get this something that's meant for teaching but looks like a spaceship and sounds like a little toy organ analog synthesizer maybe divide down thingy but then folk tech came but other benders before also and then they found all these things for example these rhythms that you do that just divisions of the main clock and then you've got overdrive points where you can turn them into percussion and this is one of the instruments that when I play with Wouter uh, um, uh, uh, and Wouter um, Jaspers, who used to be at Coma Electronic, and we play as odd narrative, I sometimes only bring the Omnichord and one or two effects, like a delay or reverb. It's just a magic instrument, I feel. Why do you have... Uh, why do you have... Uh, I have a tier 707, because that's... <laughs> something I'm gonna use next. I really got the tier 707 because it does one thing very well and that is it has Dean and MIDI and you can send a trigger out uh, wire the which one is it I think it's rim shot so I don't get any rim shots and sadly the same channel also is the output for the cowbell so yeah if I want to send a clock to my modular for example I have to not use the cowbell, which is kind of sad. But that means that the tier 707 can function like a perfect link in my studio between MIDI, Dean, Analog, uh, yeah, CV gate. So that's why it's there. And also it has some pretty nice sounds and at some point I'm going to get a ROM replacement so I can get some different sounds in there. It's already on the way. So I love this machine actually, but it's pretty new. So I still don't really know how to use it beyond like programming one pattern. That's why I rely on effects to make it nice. Yeah, Brumata, no requests for more cowbell. Sort sad, sad, sad. Um, okay. So. Okay. Then let's go over to the Maestro and some test equipment. I hope I can get it in frame. Let me check if it's in frame. So I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't. I'll have to screw it up. So, yeah, lots of cables on the floor. Okay, because down there, there's a little TM500 rack. And yeah, that's going to play a role in this next part. Switch off microphone. Ah, still on. Why is it still on? Sorry.
this is the right one. <laughs> oh, I left you over here. Come with me. Okay, so <laughs> that was just something I've been working on. It's basically, oh, I've been having so much fun with just playing these synthesizers together. So this is kind of a work in process and a proof of concept that I can. Oh, it's very noisy here. Let me switch off the TM500. So uh, that TM500 has a fan in there and I need to replace it with a smaller one, but those things get hot and this has this lovely small, uh, what's it called, oscilloscope in there and that makes uh, nice sounds. So this was basically the Maestro and the Polywalks both by Vladimir Kuzmin doing the synth things and this thing was just the flanger hoax from Electromonix self-resonating on the overheads, basically, on the hi-hat and on the toms and stuff like that. And I think that was all there was in that track. And uh, the TM500 did this... I hope it sounded, it sounded good. I hope I didn't overdrive everything so much, so much for you guys. So, again, ask questions. I'll be checking now. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, Paris, this crazy combination I like this it's very th so get, if you get a flanger hoax I mean they're selling them out now I think in Germany they cost like 239 at Soundhouse so nobody they I don't think they were made for long I think they're yeah you you can find them here in Germany at least selling them out as far as I know and um, so from, from which instrument uh, could I ever could I never part um, Siat Lombarda Coco Quantos, probably. That's just my forever favorite instrument. And now the Zuiko makes it very hard. Um, the extra saturation. Oh, that's a little mixer down there. Let me just switch cameras again. So, do you see this mixer here? This is a Yamaha Ensemble mixer from the 1970s and is basically a bit. A grit, as gritty as a Boss BX mixer, but a bit more hi-fi, and it has a lovely spring whip in it. And a very cheesy, but nice, drum machine. And I got this locally, I'm sorry, uh, pretty cheap, so I'm really happy to have gotten this, because it really adds a lot to the TR-707, which can get a bit stale after some time, but with this, it just adds character, because you've got instrument, line and mic options and this is basically three different ways you can distort and with the gain you can add more distortion it's it's great it's really a fun mixer for yeah especially for something like the tier 707 to give it some more power yes um, um have a have you ever played backhein i only played backhein cantina which was nice so that was fun but never in um yeah Dip with. What's the best crowd you've performed for? I really loved um, the performance I did uh, both times in uh, Up to Date Festival. Once in Bialystok, where I played in the Philham Philharmonie, which this concert is up. You can watch that in full. And at San Z Salon Ambiento in Warsaw. Uh, and there, yeah, it was just amazing to see like 200 people chilling. <laughs> and listening to my music and it, it was really really nice so it was a really nice uh, respectful crowd and um, those are two concepts that really stuck out for me so both uh, uh, DTEC uh, if you're uh, if you watched it at some point thanks for inviting me bo to both festivals really lovely um, yep 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 Mm, what do we have still? What is the TM500? Oh, that's a little... Basically, it's a modular, but made for test equipment. And the nice thing is you get all these cool modules for it, like filters and mixers, little oscilloscopes, pulse generators, and it just sounds absolutely ripping. The downside is it gets really hot. So I wanted to do a video and I stacked like all my little unventilated TM500 racks together. And what happened was, yeah, the top one died because the heat would just flow up and, yeah, 
too much heat. So I kind of have to find a way to just have like two or three somewhere. They're so big though. They're really like this deep, but the sound is just, nothing sounds as brutal like this. And when I hit like the overdrive on that, it's not overdrive, it's just much more game. It just sounds brutal yet absolutely precise and no noise. So this is like to get the test equipment sound at home in a smaller space than what's usual, like <laughs> this is pretty, pretty damn good. How long did, oh, hi, Gerald, nice to see you. How did your latest album take to create from start to finish? Oh, it was a long process. That uh, album is called Schwebungssumme, I think. Uh, uh, I have a copy here. So here, so this album took me basically, I think half a year to write because it was I wanted to get good at making music with test equipment. Impulse Generator was very much in the, okay, what does happen when I do this? So very exploratory. This is me figuring out how to get the ideas in my head translated with the test equipment. And I, yeah, I really love this album because I can see myself grow musically. And that is to see, it's, yeah, Learning is one of the most beautiful things in life. So this is a document to that, even though it sounds rather dark and destructive. Fitting the times. But yeah, so this is now sold out at the label. Bleep still has some copies and there are 10 on the way to Patchpoint in Berlin, but then it's all gone. Thanks to everybody who bought it. So yeah, thank you. Um, when are you bringing back single malt synthesis? I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of like time-wise. It's right now. We've got time is one of the hardest things right now, especially with lockdown and uh, yeah, two kids and we have to take care of both. So yeah, it's hard to do something like single malt synthesis right now. Right now, yeah, that's it's a bit difficult time-wise. So I can't say when. Um. So, dude, are you well? Ha! <laughs> My nephew is in the chat. Drums. <laughs> nice to see you. Check out his channel. Drums. Click on it. Check it out. It's German hip hop remixes. So, good thing. Okay. So, I'm going to move the camera now to, because, oh, we're losing time now. We've got only 20 minutes more, 90 minutes. I'm going to move the camera so it looks at me from here. So, let's see how this goes. How does it look? Nope. Okay. So, because now I want to play, yeah, in this corner a bit. And one thing that I've gotten to really love in the past, yeah, since winter is making music that has a bit of a beat to it. And I dance for myself, basically, in my studio. But I'm looking to put this out. And the fun thing is there have been some, like, dance labels that are interested in making, like, a 12-inch, which is, yeah, for me very nice because that's not an area I did a lot of music for. I had two albums that were more beat-driven, but both labels folded. And at the same time, the ambient music that I did was listened to by many people. So I made more ambient music and had the music with rhythms more on the back burner. But to hear now that this is something that people enjoy makes me happy. So I want to show you something. <laughs> okay. It's always what do I need to turn on? I need to turn off. <laughs>
Hello. Da. Okay. Okay. So. I think that was the, the second to last track and it's good because my computer is losing power. <laughs> because that's one thing with all these things streaming. I realized that my hub would turn the computer to what's it called to yeah, would make a ground loop. And every hub that I tried did a ground loop, so now I have to run it on batteries. And those are running out fast. So <laughs> probably gonna stop exactly at the time that this stream ends for me. So questions, questions, questions. Um, I think one thing that I could say is like, I don't know if you've noticed, but everything so far has been through a phaser and you can hear phasers in the background phasing. I've fallen in love with phasers and I got basically any phaser I could find and put it on everything. And right now, <laughs> I think it's the greatest thing ever to put a phaser on every single instrument. It's, I don't know, it's silly, but it's fun. So yeah, this is just a little jam that I basically played. Tier 606 was the master and the Rhodes runs through a cork X911 uh, guitar synthesizer, which just does basically goes crazy because it can't make sense of the chords, and that's lovely. It, goes, so it makes Rhodes playing a lot more fun because I had neglected the Rhodes, which is a bad thing to do, but now rediscovered the love also through a phaser. All right. Okay. Happy birthday, Melly. Or Melich? Melly? Melly? I hope Melly. I'm just going to say Melly. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> What's your favorite acoustic instrument to work with? Piano. Absolutely. Uh, 140 BPM. Yeah, I got some faster. I realized that this tempo was actually very fast. The other track was a 142 that I played with the TR-707. So, uh, Spencer Lee, um, if you want to start with test equipment, I've got uh, um, tutorials about that on my channel and then join the subreddit it's just reddit r heinbach so there you can find many people and lots of questions that are standard like what adapters to get and will i break something have been answered there a lot so and a very nice community for yeah music with test equipment uh, wow, 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 wow. is the phase 90 the best right now i don't know Right now, I don't know. Right now, I really love the crowd rock phaser and I love the small stone and I haven't had the phase 90. But it really depends on what you want to do. The Molly Pro, which I use here, is just lovely because it's 240 volt powered and it has endless headroom and it, yeah, it, I've got one that's basically modded to have unlimited resonance so you can use it as a oscillator and play that with your foot and put a fuzz pedal behind that and you got basically that what's it called the the the, the singing geisha that's one of those uh, stranger pedals so it's like a fuzz with an oscillator so something you, you can do uh yeah with that so basically i haven't found a phaser phaser that i didn't like <laughs> they're all different and they all uh sound cool so is it getting harder to find test equipment for musical purposes I don't think so. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's uh, oftentimes to just just need to look uh, look some time. There's still a lot of stuff, and uh, the hardest thing is like to fix it all up because that's constantly like the biggest problem that I have. Sorry, I have to turn off the Juno. Ah, a bit more quiet. Um, is that stuff breaks and then it's hard to replace. So, how do you like the bad stone? I really do. I really like it. I have it now on the Polyvox because I think the Electromonics and the Russian synthesizers they work really well. I really like that. Batstone is very, very soulful, and that that with the with the Polyvox is a lovely combination. Okay, so we've got eight more minutes. Um, what's your main sources of inspiration for rhythmic tracks? Um, Krautrock. <laughs> I love Motorik. That's my main inspiration. So Krautrock and Chicago House, like the early Chicago House. So I really love that. So now I'm going to try something. I don't know if it works because, of course, you all want a bit more test equipment in here. And I've got, let me show you if I can move this a bit. So here, this is now basically a rack of test equipment I use for processing. So you got lock-in amplifiers, you got a line simulator, a test tone generator, and another nuclear modular down there. 
and these are used for processing and they can turn little weak signals into something big i hope i can show that to you because it's also after some time i think they sound different so i'm gonna try to play you one more track before yeah <laughs> before my show ends i'm gonna go back here i'm gonna go like this maybe okay let's see what happens And I think that's all we have time for. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> so short, this was a lot of bandpass filters, lock and amplifier processing, the Metasonics D1000 and the Syntrax, and yeah, some little bleeps from, uh, what's it called, Summit. And then I had a little piano melody on the Coco Qantas that was looping and that made the sound Ooh, four percent on my laptop uh, <laughs> so perfect timing here i hope you enjoyed this show and thank you all for being here and thanks to the pirates for inviting me uh, this has been one of the most unusual concerts i've ever done <laughs> and i like unusual so thank you all for being here and yeah uh have fun this goes on for a long long night and yeah i'm just gonna say bye to you bye 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 and yeah thanks for being here 
I hope I've recorded all of this. Then I'm going to cut it all together and throw it up on the Patreon so you can listen to the music back in full without my blah, blah, blah. Okay. I think it's time to go. Bye.